Welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Jonathan Larson. He's with the University of Kentucky. He's the Extension Entomologist there. So, Jonathan, today we're going to get an update. An update, yes. About fire ants. Yep. Uh, fire ants, they are a stinging pest, very famous in the South. Very famously used to say they would never get to Kentucky. Unfortunately, they got here in 2022. Uh, where they started to get established in southeastern Kentucky. We're kind of worried about what's going to happen to the rest of the state, but we're cr trying to keep everybody appraised of the situation. They are very distinct. Everybody, yeah, they see a big red ant, they assume that they've seen a fire ant. That was most likely a carpenter ant or a field ant. Fire ants are pretty small for what their legend sort of makes them seem like. And they have very distinct antenna when you get them under the microscope, which most people aren't going to be willing to do. They have very distinct uh, humps sort of in between their thorax and abdomen that we use for diagnostics. But I think the most obvious thing for the regular person of the world kind of out wandering around would be their home. They build a very distinct domed fluffy mound. We do have ant hills that appear in Kentucky that are tall are kind of granulated, but this looks like it would be comfortable to lay your head on. Uh, and so if you see this kind of 12 inch tall dome, that's very fluffy in appearance, no obvious entrance hole where the ants are going in and out of, it is a, a high degree of probability that could be a fire ant mound. We would be very appreciative if people could take a photo of that and then send it to reportapest at uky.edu. That's our kind of invasive species hotline. If they can tell us the location, it doesn't have to be your address or anything like that. Uh, just at first, a county level sort of uh, geographic uh, sort of tie to the image would be helpful. If we have to dispatch some folks to come and take a look, we'll ask for more detailed information. How do you determine? I mean, like, right? You're right. Just like <laughs> anger this whole pillow. So what we do <laughs> is we walk up and kick it. It's not very scientific. Uh, I don't I don't encourage general public to do that because I don't want anybody to get stung. But what we're looking for is what's called boiling out. Fire ants have a very classic response to their home being disturbed, where they literally boil out by the hundreds, by the thousands, and they are very angry, looking for whoever touched their home. If it's a human, if it's a deer, if it's a cow, if it's a turkey, whatever it is, they're going to crawl up that animal's leg. They have a very light touch, so we don't normally detect this happening until it's too late. And then they will have this coordinated stinging response. There will be a lead worker ant that will bite you and then sting you. They kind of anchor themselves with their jaws, pull their rear end around and sting you. And that releases a pheromone that tells all the other ants to go ahead and do it too. And it feels like you got lit up. That's what people from Mississippi and Georgia and Alabama say. They like to be on the edges of things. So they like to be out in the open. Most fire ant mounds are gonna be found on sunny south or west facing hills. They don't like to be in the woods. They do like a cow pasture. Uh, they like you know, uh, anywhere that we kind of pin our animals, horses, sheep, all those uh, different things. So they're kind of a year round ant once they get established. Here in Kentucky, we've only seen big pockets of them in southeastern Kentucky, so Whitley, McCreary, Bell, and Knox. We're worried about them moving from some of those counties through floods. In most situations, they just sort of establish new colonies. They will bud. So a colony of ants will send out winged reproductive queens and males that'll mate. The new queens will fly off and start a new nest. With fire ants, that can be really problematic because they can have multiple queens to a nest. So they can spread really quickly, and then you have a lot of mounds in an area. They can also spread via the wind, so sometimes those queen ants are picked up and moved farther faster. They can also move via flood. So most ants, they get drowned out when a flood comes through. Fire ants, they'll all hold hands and then float to the surface, and they create this ant raft. And they take turns switching from underwater to above water so nobody drowns, and then they just ride the waves to a new spot. They dig in to wherever they land, the queen gets busy laying eggs again, and the colony starts all over. People can check out the Office of the State Entomologist for Kentucky. They're active on Facebook. They also have an active dynamic map where you can see where fire ants have been found in Kentucky. People from out west will notice the land between the lakes has been a hot spot before. We think those were floaters that came up from Tennessee, but they've all been eliminated. Nobody's ever been established there. Southeastern Kentucky has its hot spots. There was also one find in Louisville, of all places, that seemed to involve some interstate moving. So somebody moved to Kentucky from elsewhere, mm -hmm. and they may have accidentally brought fire ants with them. We think we have that one under control. If it gets established, it would be the furthest north fire ants have ever lived. They are being very tenacious here, and it seems like they're here to stay. They will change agriculture. They'll change the way that we take care of sports fields. It's something that Kentuckians will just have to get prepared for. People further south have lived with them for a long time, so the world's not gonna end, but it is another stinging thing out there <laughs> to be concerned about, unfortunately. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.